This tutorial, we're going to look at the SQL adapter. Specifically, we're going to see how we can directly integrate SQL Server with our BizTalk system. In this particular example, we're really going to be looking at a stored procedure. So how is it that I can call or execute a stored procedure from my BizTalk solution? We have here a stored procedure already created on our SQL Server. It simply inserts some loan information, make sure whether the customer ID exists or not, creates a unique ID for the loan that's inserted. But most importantly, the last line here is a select statement that ends in 4XML auto. This will represent the data that will be sent back, the messages that will be sent back to our BizTalk system in XML format. You see I added a line comma XML data here. This is a one time only use of the XML data where I'm using it for my generation of the schema that will represent both the input and output messages that I'll be using to execute and get my result back from this stored procedure. So I've added that in, saved the change to the stored procedure and now I'm going to add generated item to my existing project. I'm adding adapter metadata. I'm going to choose SQL obviously as my option here. And I'll have to put in some connection information. Choose my database server name. Choose the name um, of the database itself, type of security, things like that. and then now I'm going to type in a target namespace. This will be used to uniquely identify the schema that we're just about to generate. Remember target namespaces have nothing to do with where this is located, it's just unique identifier and it is case sensitive. You need to keep note of it because you're going to use it when configuring the send adapter later on. Because we are sending and then receiving something back from SQL Server, it will be a multi-part schema that we're generating. So I'm going to specify stored procedure. <coughs> then of course I can choose the stored procedure that I want. It will automatically read that stored procedure. I can put in some default values for the parameters if I wanted to. Not necessary. Must click generate generate the basic script that will be used and then I should be done here. Now as the wizard processes it's doing a couple things. Generated this multi-part schema that we see here that has both the loan request route that we specified and the loan response route that we specified. It also generated an orchestration. And there are a couple artifacts defined within the orchestration already for us. One of them will be the multi-part message. The other one is a port type. So this is a two-way port type that we'll use when we create the logical send port here. And there you can see the multi-part message types that we're going to use to define our messages, our message variables that we're going to be processing. So create a message variable for my input message and move forward then and create a couple message variables to represent both the response and the request to that SQL server. Now make sure you choose the parts that are under the multi-part message types not under schemas. You'll actually see something under schemas too but they don't work the same way. So now I just set up my orchestration the way I normally would. I'm going to have an incoming document, transform it, and send it now out to SQL. So I'm going to get going through port configuration wizard to set up this two-way port. So use an existing port type, and this is the one that was automatically created when I went through the add generated item wizard. I'll be sending to SQL first and then receiving back that little bit of XML confirming that the loan was created. And here we see the two-way logical port. And all I have to do is match it up to my send and receive shapes. Once I see, receive the response, I'll just send out a text document someplace. Now, of course, I have to create a physical port to match. So I'm over here in the administration console. 
creating a physical port and my type is going to be SQL. Notice I have a limit of number two-way pores. Makes sense. <coughs> this is where remembering that target namespace and what we call the roots, the response or the request are going to come in handy. Basic connection information as usual. But remember that target namespace and remember it is case sensitive. And the response document was the second part of that multi-part message, so it should be loan response. I want to come back. I want to resolve as XML, so I'm going to use the XML receive pipeline. Don't care about the sending. It's in the correct format to the SQL server. Now, like any other BizTalk solution, I'm going to have to bind my orchestration. The receive port, my two way send port. and the file send port where the final result is going off to. And then of course all I have to do is start the application as I would normally and I can send my documents through.